everyone, I'm Leslie. I'm traveling the world looking for everything unique, different, and extraordinary, and I'm sharing all of it right here on Point Your Soul North. So today, in my top five list, one of the places I was most excited to see is Petra, Jordan. Little did I know Jordan was going to deliver in a way that blew my mind. Between Juresh, had no idea what was in store for us in Juresh, the Dead Sea, and Petra. This is a video you want to watch to the very end. Absolutely extraordinary. And we have seen world wonders all over the world. And if all the world wonders were tens on the 10 scale, Petra is a hundred on the 10 scale. It is that good. And I am so excited to show you everything beautiful, amazing, and extraordinary in Jordan. So if you haven't watched my video on Cairo, Egypt, you'll want to go back and watch that because that's how this whole getting to Jordan trip started. We did a United Tours tour through Egypt. They coordinated with a tour company in Jordan so that they could kind of pass us off to do all of our amazing tour through Jordan. So we take a simple one hour flight from Cairo to Amman. We have a similar uh, guide and driver that pick us up at the airport. They walk us through immigration, handle the whole thing. As you can imagine, there's so much going on in this part of the world. We did a lot of research, but unfortunately they have just gotten thrown under the bus with everything that's going on in Israel. Although both Egypt and Jordan don't have anything to do with it. It was a bit bittersweet and it was the big beginning of what we were gonna see in Jordan when we were in the airport and it was so quiet. The immigration officer was so excited to see us, wanted to know all of where we had been and um, was we had quite a conversation with the immigration officer. We were very excited to be in Jordan, had no idea what to expect. Um, so it was just a perfect way to start. Our driver drives us um, to our hotel. We check into a beautiful hotel in Amman. Wow. And when we drive up to the hotel, we can hear um, chanting and, um, but it doesn't really register because we're kind of um, just a little discombobulated just getting there and getting checked into our hotel until 4 a.m. We hear it again and it is so loud. And come to find out, it's the Muslim Athan. It's their um, Muslim prayer, and they pray five times a day, but they do it um, publicly. Basically, an announcement goes out to the community um, in a prayer, and it, uh, there was a mosque right by our hotel. So, yeah, we heard um, and we shot out of bed at 4 a.m. That was, welcome to Jordan. Um, we're going to pray at 4 a.m. Um, <laughs> yeah. In beautiful Jordan, on our way to the Dead Sea, and a couple more Roman ruins. So excited to see the Dead Sea. Is it alive or is it dead? Is there any living things in the Dead Sea? Fish? Anything? So I mentioned the Cairo trip that United Tours booked for us, and there we had a driver and a guide. Here in Jordan, we have a driver who's kind of a guide, but for the most part, he's going to get us to the places we want to see and then connect us to a local guide at that uh, stop. 
um, to tell us what we're gonna see. So we meet up with our guide first thing in the morning after we're up at 4 a.m. Um, and um, we start our day and our driver takes us through the Jordanian um, like mountains, which are absolutely beautiful. Amman is beautiful. There is a marble quarry right in Amman and the king of Jordan uh, requires Amman to be built with only this marble. So it's kind of a beige, white, brown marble. All the buildings are the same color. And that sounds like it would be very sterile. I don't know, I just thought it was beautiful. So anyway, we take a drive through the mountains to get to the city of Jeresh. So I would love to know if anyone watching this video has obviously either been to Jordan, Amman, or Jeresh because we really went by the suggestion of the tour company as to what we should see and what not to miss. We did quite a bit of research, but they highly recommended Jeresh, so we're going. We had no idea, and it might be, it definitely is in the top five, if not maybe the top three places we've seen all over the world. So our guide takes us to Jeresh, and we are probably there for maybe two and a half hours and probably an hour and a half of it, we are there all by ourselves. And it is a huge area uh, discovered of Roman ruins that I've been to the Roman Forum in Rome um, and beautiful, very concentrated. Uh, this rivals, if not is more impressive than the Roman Forum. There were multiple theaters discovered, multiple communities, churches, the, the uh, remaining structures and the way that they are still standing is breathtaking. So there are a lot of pictures here, bear with me, but it was so beautiful. I wanna share it with you. Jeresh is known for olive oil and olive trees. Ah. Oh. Uh, definitely is so much more than that because in 1878 they discovered buried under earthquake dirt and mud a Greek foundation with Roman ruins that is spectacular. So this is the Oval Plaza or Forum. It was built in the second century AD. Andrea Bocelli has sang and had a concert in this theater. Can you even imagine? Even if you're not a Bocelli fan, even if that is not your thing, to be outside like this, listening to that, oh, that would be so cool. The most important parts of the city are the main columned streets, the other large monumental structures like the temples, the theaters, the baths, the piazzas, the bazaars. Jeresh was populated by about 20,000 individuals and visited by Roman Emperor Hadrian in 130 AC. Look to the orchestra with a marble. What? 
and oh, the amazing. stage. Under the stage, there is niches, and these niches are used to light the oil lamp at night. It is so beautiful and so well maintained. Um, you know, like buried, similar to Pompeii, that once it's buried, it's just re the, the structures are maintained in a way that is just incredible. We were in the theater. You know, we were able to walk up on the theater steps and it's just the, it's so beautiful. I, I don't know how to describe it. It just was so beautiful. I hope these pictures translate so you can really get um, how incredible it is. But a school trip came in. So while we were doing our tour, um, which by the way, when we got to Jeresh, our guide passed us off to a Jeresh Roman ruin tour guide who took us through uh, the ruins and was able to give us all the history and backstory and um, was incredible and so passionate and so disappointed that that area has yet to receive its UNESCO World Heritage um, recognition and it so deserves it. But anyway, back to the theater. We're in the theater and a school group comes in of probably 15, 16 year old girls and they were so enamored with us and Roy particularly, I think. Um, they just were, just kept looking at us and they were taking pictures and you could tell that they were taking pictures, trying to look like they were taking pictures of themselves and trying to get us in the background. It was just funny. So finally Roy offers to take pictures with them and oh my gosh, the place goes crazy and they're all running to try to gather and get pictures with us. So yeah, we're gonna be in a whole bunch of um, Jordanian, girls pictures um but they were so excited and it just made it really fun for us We leave Jeresh and we're on our way to float in the Dead Sea. So that also has been on my bucket list for decades. And it's so remote, even in Jordan. It is so remote from where we are in the United States, in Arizona. And it's such a, it's just such an experience and an area. And now especially, because as we're coming in, it is the lowest point on earth. So we're dropping down into this valley and you can see Israel on the other side of the Dead Sea. It's shared obviously between Jordan and Israel. So to see Israel and to know that Jesus was baptized in this water, it's just, it's really difficult to just get your head around that you're in that place at that moment. It's just, yeah, incredible. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to a hotel that is on the water, on the Dead Sea, on the Jordan side, 
and um, we can walk down from the hotel pool to a sanctioned area that they have kind of roped off um, for their portion of the Dead Sea. So we were told before we left to make sure that we bring some kind of footwear so we can get down on the sand. I bring my flip-flops, Roy forgets his shoes. So we walk out and uh, it's probably not the hottest sand that sand could be, but it was so hot that Roy went way too far and burned the bottom of his feet. And uh, we're walking about 10 to 15 miles a day exploring the world. So we don't need burned feet, but he had burned feet. Thankfully we were at the Dead Sea salt is very helpful to wounds so hopefully that helped mitigate some of it but um they were significantly burned um but i digress so we get um out to the dead sea and there's a couple people there that that tell us there to get in the water kind of experience it and when you get out to cover your body in this mud and this mud is highly therapeutic. The Dead Sea mud is packed with restorative minerals like calcium, silica, zinc, which enhances skin's elasticity and helps to minimize the appearance of lines and wrinkles. Like sign me up for that and I'll just do it over and over and over and over again, which our guide actually recommended that. Go into the water, come out, put all the mud on, let it dry. And when it dries, you get this crazy elephant skin and then go back in, rinse it all off, float in the sea. come back out, load up with the mud again. So I did it several times while Roy was working on his feet. A couple things for the Dead Sea, super important you bring an old swimsuit because the salt can just destroy the quality of the fabric. Um, you obviously wanna make sure you have some kind of footwear because the sand is 4,000 degrees. Um, and I learned the hard way when you're laying in the Dead Sea, um, we had waves and maybe on a lack of a wavy day, this would not be applicable, but it's important to kind of keep your head up and not just flat in the water because a wave came over and I don't know how to articulate this either, but the salt water is very, very oily and salt got in my eyes and that is like death it was burned so bad and um because it's so oily it's super slippery out there so trying to get out of the water and get to my towel to wipe my eyes i did it and i went back in i didn't care put more mud on and uh, just kept the process going it just makes your skin so silky soft the only thing I'm sad about is that it impacted my henna tattoo that I had gotten in Dubai before we left for Cairo. And I loved that henna. So, but you know, if I have to lose my henna from being in the Dead Sea, that's not a bad gig. So I'm um, just an incredible moment to lay in this crazy water that you literally can't cannot sink down to save your life. You're float, float, float. Um, and I just was looking up at the sky, just recounting the bajillion things that I have so much to be grateful for. Um, that is a moment that I will never forget. I just felt like at one with earth, water, my faith, that area, being so close to Israel, knowing what's going on right now. We were out there by ourselves. I bet we could scrub the internet and not find other pictures of other people in probably the last 40 years at least that have been 
to this resort at the Dead Sea without a soul out there. Just a beautiful moment. And we spent a couple hours out there. It was, it was glorious. Unfortunately, Roy left hobbling, um, but still totally loved the experience at the Dead Sea. Um, shout out to the Holiday Inn Dead Sea because we loved that. So day three, we're in Jordan. We're in, we're in Amman. We leave the Dead Sea, go back to our hotel, and we wake up in Amman again to a 4 a.m. prayer. Uh, and we leave to take a three-hour drive. And again, if you remember, Petra was on my top five list. And I was so excited and I left just blown away. I have hundreds of pictures of Petra. So I won't um, totally photo just blast you here, but I want you to see this incredible place. And if you have any travel bug in your system whatsoever, I would run to your bucket list right now and write down Petra Jordan as a place to see. Absolutely the number one. Blew everything we've seen out of the water. So amazingly, extraordinarily awesome. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about Petra. So before I show you the incredible pictures of Petra. Uh, our photographer, I mean tour guide, he was a tour guide, but I think he loved the photography part way more than he um, enjoyed telling us uh, what the history of Petra. Um, because we posed and took so many goofy pictures. Um, we were super grateful for all that he was able to capture for us, but we got so many just goofy pictures. So this is a warning for all the goofy pictures of Roy and I posing and posing and posing and posing and <laughs> posing. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about Petra. Petra is our fifth wonder of the world. It's magical, it's mysterious. It's been on the UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1985. UNESCO has described Petra as one of the most precious cultural properties of man's cultural heritage. Spectacular rock cut city unlike anywhere in the world. Tourism here in Petra, typically there are about 5,000 people per day. When we were there, if there were 500 people, and it goes on for miles, if there were 500 people, I would be surprised. We felt like the majority of the time we were there by ourselves. So many of the monuments, we have pictures where no one was around. Again, bittersweet, such an incredible moment to be in such an incredible place. Um, Roy's gonna kill me for saying incredible so much, but it was so incredible uh, without people in your pictures. So if you know anything about Petra, what you've probably seen is the treasury. So there are pictures of Petra and the treasury. If you aren't familiar with Petra, you probably are familiar with Indiana Jones and the picture of the treasury is in the Indiana Jones movie. There is absolutely no way to articulate how unbelievable this is. This is carved into this stone. It is absolutely stunning. 
Petra's treasury. Absolutely incredible. You can take horses or donkeys to ride down to get just to the treasury if you want. It's not that far and it's flat and it's downhill, so it's not really necessary. But just so you know, because when you get there, the horse and donkey people are soliciting you for rides and it does make you question like, do I need to ride down there? Like, how far is it? Um, if you're at all, you know, capable of walking in, in it's not even sand, it's kind of hard dirt uh, and, you know, relatively physically capable, you can walk to the treasury. And then there are donkeys and horses as you go further down. Uh, when you get all the way down in, there's another area called the monastery that is uphill and you can take donkeys on that as well because it is quite a hike to get up. So that could be useful if you wanted to do that. We're here. We're here, we made it. We are at the treasury. At Petra. At Petra. Is it everything you had thought it would be? It's more actually, believe it or not, it's more. It's amazing. We have it almost to ourselves. Look yeah, at this, no one behind us. Unbelievably beautiful and quiet and gorgeous. So to give you a little history about Petra, Petra began to prosper around the first century BC and continued to do so roughly until about 363 AD. An earthquake in the fourth century majorly destroyed Petra, which remained abandoned for over five centuries. It was rediscovered much later in the early 19th century. 1812. That's not that long ago. Can you imagine being an explorer in 1812 and you discover this? You discover Petra in this city, this carved city of just mind-blowing beauty. I, I can't even imagine that. I'm a huge explorer, adventurous. I love to climb all over and search and hike and, um, you know, me finding a little heart rock is like a moment for me. I can't imagine coming around the corner and seeing this carved tomb. Oh my God, look at this. Oh my God. Wow. So shout out to Swiss explorer jo Johannes Burkhardt. Since then, it's been widely known as the Lost City, aka the Rose City for the beautiful red sandstone the structures are carved from. The name Petra is derived from Petros, which means rocks in Greek. The name was probably given to the city due to its carved sandstone and rock structures. More than just the impressive treasury, the treasury is actually a mausoleum, but the local Bedouins believed it contained riches and renamed it treasury. The Nabataeans believed in the afterlife and taking extra care of their dead. They built over a thousand tombs in Petra. This makes the site one of the largest royal tomb complexes in the world. Our guide has us crawling through caves. Look at this. Look at that. What world am I in right now? Look at that. What? 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 This theater holds 4,000 people. The, the narrows, you walk through just carved cliff walls um, to this tomb, that tomb, it opens up. There's ruins, Roman ruins um, down uh, at the base. So 
So walking down the Narrows past the Treasury, you can walk back in typically about five miles or so, you're gonna get down to the steps. There's about 900 steps that'll take you to the monastery, which is another tomb. Uh, so you've got about 10 miles round trip. There's not too much of a decline going in, um, but as you can imagine, you're gonna be going up to get out. Um, it's dry, it's desert. There's um, some shade because it does get narrow and canyony, um, but it's a it's a hike like nothing you can imagine it goes on and on and on and is gorgeous it's just yeah it's magical it will have god will it will have the peace of them the peace of mind the whole time with it Amsterdam beer, Amstel actually, in Petra. Okay, what's your thoughts? I think Petra might be the greatest wonder of the world so far. It's bigger, more spectacular uh, than anything we've seen so far. Out of Chichen Itza. Chichen Itza is not even close. Christ the Redeemer. That is the most bogus. Absolutely, that doesn't belong in any world wonder. That's not even a Brazil wonder. Uh, a, a Brazil wonder would be a Guazu Falls. A Guazu Falls, which, which is a, a world wonder. It just. Uh, it's not a modern world. And then we had uh, the Great Wall. Ooh. Great Wall's a wonder, but not close to this. Then we had Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal's a wonder, but not close to this. And then we had. The pyramids. Pyramids are a major wonder. So the pyramids are a close second. Okay, and so still Petra's number one on the wonder list. It's not even close. All right, that is a good assessment. Amazing, the number one world wonder, number one world wonder. Absolute number one, stunning, beautiful, incredible, fabulous, marvelous. You see that treasury behind us? There's hundreds of the buildings equally as nice as that, and it's amazing. Hundreds here. Unbelievable. We stayed the night in Petra, which I also would highly recommend. Uh, it was so nice to be in the hotel. We obviously were exhausted. Our hotel was uh, right at the exit of the Narrows. I will tag them in the caption below. Um, they had a rooftop bar that looked out over the entrance to Petra. Um, we had a beautiful sunset, beautiful dinner, a toast to just an amazing Jordanian trip. And so, yeah, I hate to say goodbye to Jordan. I hate to say goodbye and end this video because we loved it so, so, so much. Oh, 
while you're out there, you could also stay in Wadi Rum. I would highly encourage you to research that. It's like being on the moon and in the desert and they have domed tents uh, that you can see the stars. It's incredible. The next morning, our driver took us directly to the airport so that we could fly to Rome from Amman. And our flight to Rome not only are we highly encouraged not to take Wiz Air, Wiz, W-I-Z-Z, -Z, Air. Everybody on board the Ultimate World Cruise gave us such a hard time about taking Wiz Air. The tour company highly recommended not taking Wiz Air because their schedule um, can be very temperamental and the flights can change and times can change and so they were very concerned about us leaving Amman and flying Wizz Air. Um, but it was our only direct flight to Rome and we went for it and you'll have to wait for the Rome video to see how that went. Um, but we leave on Wizz Air and our three hour flight turns in about three and a half hours because we have to fly around Israel in order to get out, which makes total sense given all that's going on in Israel. But it's crazy to think that we're on a commercial airline in a part of the country that we actually have to fly to a whole different area to come back and around um, to just avoid um, unrest. It's just crazy. So yeah, tune in to Rome, the next YouTube video on Rome to hear how our flight went. Petra, Juresh, Jordan in general, the Dead Sea. <sighs> Just so, so, so amazing. I would love to hear your comments. I would love to hear if you've been to any of these places, what you experienced, what you thought. I would love to hear what you think of this video. And I hope you feel like you were there and that you really got to see these three places we loved so much. Um, as much as we did. So um, as always, thank you so much for being part of this journey. I'm so grateful for you. I'm so grateful for you watching. I so appreciate you being part of this journey. If you've liked the video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. We continue our journey off from Jordan. Um, we are flying to Rome uh, to do about 24 days through Italy. So stay tuned for that video. Um, there is so much we did through Italy and um, the trip doesn't end there. So be sure to tune back in for that. As always, thank you so much. And until then, bye for now. <laughs> Just a funny side story. So we get to the airport in Amman to fly to Rome and we go to the American Express lounge because so we've got about two hours uh, before our flight takes off. So we're in this beautiful lounge and um, Roy goes to the men's room and it's, you know, I don't know, maybe 10 feet around the corner from where we're sitting and he's gone for a really long time. And the next thing I know, I hear banging on the door. He is banging on the men's room door because opening the men's room door, he broke the handle off and he's stuck in the men's room. So I hear banging. I don't realize it's him until I hear him yelling, hello, hello. And someone from the lounge comes and opens the door from outside and he's there holding the handle of the men's room. I don't know, I just thought it was random, but super funny. So. There you go. Bye, Jordan. We um, destroyed the men's room. Roy destroyed the men's room uh, <laughs> door handle.